Colossal Order address that launch. They also talk about future updates for the game, the issues that they've selected out that they're working on right now, and updates on performance. And if that wasn't enough, we'll also get to take a look at the juicy, still in beta, new editor for City Skylines 2. I'm Jumbo Pixel. You know the drill. Sit back, relax. Let's take a look. We've got plenty to discuss today. Beginning with Colossal Order's decision to revive Word of the Week, their sort of update on what they're doing and what's next for the game. They used to do this at the beginning of City Skylines 1, and there doesn't seem like a more apt time to revive it than now. We all know that City Skylines 2's launch has been a little bit rough around the edges, to say the very least. Back to the Word of the Week, though. We can kind of drill it down into four key sections. The first one, they say, hey, the game released last week and we are happy the game is out. Quote, however, the launch was overshadowed by technical issues which caused disappointment and rightfully so. We're happy to see that many players do enjoy the game. And for those who are currently unable to play, I want you to know that we are working on a number of fixes and improvements to address your reports. End quote. So that one kind of sets the scene. The game is out. However, its launch, as they directly address, was overshadowed by technical issues. Of course we know it was. If you saw my video where I tested it on the RTX 4090 and a fairly decent PC built around the side, you'll maybe remember these results. And if you didn't watch that video, well, you probably weren't going to anyway, so here are the results. As you can see, barely managing a 30 FPS on high settings at 1440p. Now, if you're playing on Steam last week, the first hotfix rolled out for us, the first patch for City Skylines 2. It was, of course, a minor update, though they have signaled that we should expect one major one to come alongside these minor updates as they work through the game's sort of initial post-launch period, however long that might be. But back to the point, it also made its way to Microsoft Store and Game Pass, the patch itself, of course, largely focused on performance. This included optimization for LODs, which if you're not in the know, I wasn't, level of detail, which, uh, a fun fact, at the moment includes a ludicrous amount of detail, opting for visual fidelity, perhaps over performance, to the point where actually it's not really even visual fidelity. Here, they acknowledge teeth I remember reading an article somewhere on uh, Twitter, formerly Twitter, now X, whatever Elon's calling his 14th child today, uh, about teeth, individual teeth being rendered inside of the little dudes walking around in your city, which is an extraordinary level of detail, certainly. Uh, anyway, they go on to say that they've also identified other offenders, as we know, because we've seen Paradox's guide or Colossal Order's guide to optimized performance in City Skylines 2, addressing things like depth of field, Global Illumination and Fog all have now been tweaked across all of the platforms where Cities 2 is currently available. The third point with some meat on its bones is about where they're headed now in the very short term. They say that in the week ahead, they're going to continue to focus on those forum reports. I'll try and link that below, uh, as always with all of the sources or things that I talk about on screen where we can directly report some of the many issues that are present in City Skylines 2, and they say that they'll be fixing the most urgent issues. Work continues on assets and those lobs that we talked about earlier, the teeth, uh, but they say it's a task, quote, spanning over a longer period of time, as there are quite a few detailed, uh, different types of assets needing special attention, end quote, though I slightly balls it up. Uh, on top of the performance work, we're also looking into gameplay issues, they say. Uh, fixes being tested for education, <laughs> a vital part of any city. Uh, where college or university eligibility is not shown correctly in the UI. I've ran into this one. College demand just seemed ludicrously high. Uh, and for trading, where it looks like citizens aren't consuming all the different commercial types correctly, resulting in not enough customers for local business. You've probably seen all of your local businesses crying out that they don't have enough customers as well. Uh, one other issue that they particularly touch on is garbage and a garbage problem. It seems that some citizens are abandoning their dogs as well, uh, resulting in a huge dog pack just stranded in the city, uh, which as they rightly point out is not very cool. Uh, so lots of issues to discuss there, uh, plenty, plenty to get through. Uh, and good to see actually that they're fixing some of those ones that I've ran into a lot. It would also be nice to see them talk a little bit more about those issues that came up around the economic simulation that I talked about in my last video on this game, which is 
uh, at least appearing as though a lot of it is false. It seems some of the back end stuff not quite working properly there. And in the last point, which is a look to the future beyond, say, the next week, the next patch, the next minor update on Steam. They say that performance improvements and bug fixes will continue to take the top priority until they've reached a level that they are satisfied with. All performance improvements will benefit the development of console platforms as well, of course. A shout out to you, our console brethren, who were left behind by probably about six months, I think, from the PC launch. They say they hope to bring the game to Xbox Series X and S, as well as the PlayStation 5 as soon as they possibly can. And then in a further look to the future, they say that they want to thank everyone for those reports that we talked about earlier. Again, they link that forum post where you can shout about all of the things that are wrong with City Skylines 2. The developers are very active to their credit. I know sometimes it might seem like City Skylines 2 is just being dogged on a lot. And I hope that that's not the impression that I give uh, as sort of a balanced and overall view because actually this is a really fun game. And when it does work, it's a really satisfying city builder. Uh, to engage with. They finally say that we'll get another update next week on how the work that we've just discussed is progressing and of course I'm happy to provide that update to you alongside anything else interesting that may have occurred but probably wouldn't deserve a dedicated video in of itself because I'm also not here to waste your time. Speaking of which, that precious resource, let's keep a hold of it and move through to something else that was revealed about 24 hours-ish. I don't know, all the days kind of blur into one. Uh, but about a day before this update came out, they showed off the still in beta, but some quite impressive beta footage of City Skylines Editor, the program that will do uh, actually a lot of things, an impressive suite of things, right down to the granular detail. They start by skipping the virtual texture load to jump straight into the editor, where you can see probably a fairly familiar looking screen and setting. Uh, they talk about how inside of it, inside of the map and asset editor, you'll be able to create maps and assets. Uh, the propping of different assets will also occur, as well as a modding function that will of course work a little bit separately from those first sort of map asset propping uh, creations and customizations. We'll also have access to the terraforming tools, the same tools that we currently have access to in game. Likewise, of course, as you can see, the same kind of maps and stuff here as well. And of course, it's all about sort of being down at that granular detail. So outside of the big terrain tools that you can see them showing off here, there's also the small things, the little props, the options in and around them, as well as the props that occur on the map. I think they show off a temple or something at one point throughout the video. Uh, likewise, we'll have access to the same road tools that we would have inside of the game, as well as many more options. I would note they mentioned specifically that the UI on the right hand side of the screen, or, or maybe even as a whole, uh, is still a work in progress. You can kind of tell the stuff on the right is absolutely just that. Uh, they then demonstrate a little bit of individual prop placing as well as some more dense bush and then talk a little bit more about how it won't just be those trees, but also as I mentioned before, the map props, right down to the individual little placement of the smallest detail, which is a wonderful thing to see. Stepping back to the broader details, you'll also have control over resources, where they're placed, how they're placed, the kind of areas that might be farmable, or maybe uh, you'll be mining for diamonds instead. And of course, all of that is set on a backdrop of having broader control, not just to terraform and use those terraforming tools, but also place water, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, they finally end by saying that you'll be able to share your map on Paradox Mods, which is the platform where, of course, uh, modding will be shared as well, not making it to Steam Workshop this time around. And that, my friends, concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed me building a new island in the background where it was gameplay and not something relevant on your screen or some B-roll or what have you. If you didn't enjoy this video, please leave a like on the way out. It means a great deal. And I'll catch you wonderful people next time.